recording to the cloud. Hello, good. everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are accessing us. Yeah, great to be here. Lesson 52. Ready? A review, right? This is a review. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go. Okay, lesson 52. Today's review. Um, well, I just saw a word. I looked twice here. Interesting. I wonder what that's about. Today's review covers these ideas. What I saw twice was today's review recovers these ideas. That's why I went, oh, that's a strange word to use, but it says covers. It no, covers it's perfect. Because, because all learning is a remembering of what we've already suppressed because we share the mind of God. So we, it, all learning is recovering. So maybe my Christ vision was peeking through and read it as today's review recovers these yeah. ideas. Way to go. Yes. One for okay. the Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, so number one lesson, uh, oh, sorry, review is I am upset because I see what is not there. Ooh, I see what is not there. Reality mm. is never frightening. Mm. It is impossible that it could upset me. Reality brings only perfect peace. When I am upset, it is always because I have replaced reality with illusions I made up. <laughs> the illusions are upsetting because I have given them reality and thus regard reality, true reality, as an illusion. Nothing in God's creation is affected in any way by this confusion of mine. Mm -hmm. I am always upset by nothing. Um, I, I, um, mm, that's a big <laughs> one. Okay. It is. Yeah. So, and I've, I've got a note here. I'd like to share it before I forget. Please. Is there will be a recommendation here, which you can take if you want to. Um, and there's a blog, and I think it's an audio recording uh, that supports this and explains this in more detail if you would like to, to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So we will have that in We'll put that link to that blog post. It's called Give Peace a Chance. Oh, good. good. Yeah. It okay. talks about, that unpacks this. Yeah, Give um, Peace a Chance. Because the other one that we did was the missing piece. So this is a different blog also on the importance of peace and the difference. Yeah, thanks, sis. Great. Yeah, so that's a good one. Um, do we need to unpack that anymore or yes you know, reality is never frightening um it's impossible that it could upset me he's talking about what 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 the holy self sees what the christ sees in us not what the ego sees right okay yeah well he's and he's referring us back you know our nature native and natural state our mind with god is always at peace so that wish for separation we needed an upset we needed that mind to lose peace and go into some state of contraction and the way that we figured out how to do that was by raising imagery and thinking that we as soon as we judge it and know what it's for you know we've decided that it's fearful and the mind contracts so I just want us to see that no matter what problem you think that you're facing, it's never in the problem. You never actually even have to address the decoy. Come back, back, back and see that the decoy, the symbol, the problem, right, is a smoke screen. What the ego doesn't want you to know is that it's about that feeling state that you have when you think about it, when you're trying to solve it, when you're lamenting it your mind is in a state of fear, which clamps down and it is a temporary, but yet effective means to shunt off the voice and the memory of God. 
Only when we are in that state of peace are we in communion, in the flow with God. Um, but the, the upset is what clamps it. And then from that moment forward, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter what that story calls itself. Is it a body problem? Is it a relation problem? Is it a lack? Is it attack? Is it death? Any of those are just fearful imagery to make the mind clamp down, shut down. Okay, so it's the upset that's the focus. After the upset, we don't, you know, we can, we do, we spend lots of times, lifetimes <laughs> in our problems, but um, I just want to cue us in to look back and realize it's the, it's that feeling state that the ego is hammering for. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sis, for that explanation. Mm -hmm. um, the second uh, lesson here in 52 is I see only the past. As I look about, I condemn the world I look upon and I call this seeing. I hold the past against everyone and everything, making them my enemies. When I have forgiven myself and remembered who I am, I will bless everyone and everything I see. There will be no past and therefore no enemies and I will look with love on all that I failed to see before. Wow, that's beautiful, isn't it? It is. It's another great exercise of uh, being dropped onto the earth without any sense of past. What if you met every single brother or sister without any sense of past? You know, we really would behold a, 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 an adult brother or sister with the innocence and awe that we do. Notice when you see a baby in a carriage, how all of our defenses drop and you know our heart moves out and like we're just looking right in that child's eyes and we give love and they coo and they get excited and love us back and that's how we would really encounter everybody without this filter of fear and that filter of fear substance is based on our past i don't like that i don't trust this this is different from me they don't think like i do Wow, fresh eyes, looking through the eyes of love in every now moment, wouldn't we welcome every brother and sister as the Christ? Because we'd have no reference to see them anything as anything but. So if we take this tissue, for example. <laughs> I almost did the same thing. <laughs> oh, look at you, one mind, right? Yeah. So we'll just say that that's, mm -hmm. that's the past. That's the ego thought system. Yes. Right? So that's the ego thought system that wants to be unfairly treated, mm -hmm. that wants to that wants to attack because it believes that attack is its salvation. And so if I try to see Corrine, or if I'm trying to see you or my parents, there you go. <laughs> look at look at Corrine now. What <laughs> I'm looking know? right through this little hole right here. That's all I could trying to make sense of <laughs> looking through my past. Mm. Oh. Wow, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty drop vicious. It. Drop it. That's the only way you. <laughs> drop it. Let's drop it. Let's drop it. <laughs> Say That's goodbye. It. <laughs> That's it. So, as soon as we're, tr we're triggered, and I had to do this myself too, go through this phase where I, I needed something physical like this, you know? Mm -hmm. My filter, of course, my filter, my original filter was covered in black marks all over it to depict the ego thought system and its terrible attack judgments yeah yeah but i needed to do this whenever i was triggered was to draw this out and remind myself okay i'm obviously seeing this person through this filter mm -hmm. yeah. i need to drop the filter That's and invite important. holy spirit to show me the truth the reality behind it with a capital r with christ vision so thank you, sis. Yeah. Yeah. And how exhausting it is to be dragging the past forward, always covering over what's really here to be experienced. Mm. Vision is here. Get curious about what is really going on here. If I'm willing to drop this sack of the past, drop this filter of fear, I can see. I'll see with Holy Spirit. I'll have Christ's vision. I'll know 
as God's causing me to know. I'll think the thoughts that God's ordering me to think because I'm not defending myself against God anymore, right? It, the fruit is worth it. <laughs> I think I'm just saying something. <laughs> the only purpose really for this filter of fear, ego filter of fear in the past is to blow our nose on it, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but don't, don't, don't use the holy one. <laughs> don't use the holy one. Throw it away. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> don't oh, let me that thank you. Yeah. Oh, so good to laugh at the ego, isn't it? You have to. It's not a mask. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. Okay, so where are we up to? We're up to lesson 52, lesson three. I mean, the third one. My mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. I see only my own thoughts and my mind is preoccupied with the past. What then can I see as it is? Oh, I just want to stop here because Jesus does say that the real world, which is, you know, the healed dream the, that we'll, we will see with Christ vision once we choose to look past the ego dream, yeah, that that real world is here now. Mm -hmm. It's here now, right? So if we, if we look, if we give Holy Spirit permission to heal our mind and remove, this is a clean tissue, by the way. I didn't blow my nose on it. <laughs> and just to remove that filter, right, uh -huh. then we're going to see the real world. We're going to see yes. our loved ones. We're going to see strangers. We're going to see people, how they really are, not with oh. that filter over them we're going to see ourselves as innocent we're going to see others as innocent and we're not going to have that persistent sense of threat right you know where we're just waiting for the other shoe to drop right right um we're we going to know we're innocent we're going to know that we that um we are guiltless and therefore we're not going to anticipate mm -hmm. any attack and right. we're going to be able to do that for others as well and Hold that I, space, yeah. So <clears throat> imagine the special relationship. This is me. This is my mom. Right. And I'm pretty darn sure that I know my mom because I was, you know, raised with her and, and I know her inside and out and I don't like her. You know, we, it's lots of conflict and com combativeness and we're opposites and there's a lot of story in here keeping my mom in her body and me in my body. And I remember the day that I felt really impelled. I wanted to use the seven key principles of authentic relation of uh, communication, which is what we teach about how to establish holy relationship. And the first time I sat down with my mom and I allowed, I wanted this more than I wanted the old dynamic with my mom. And when I joined with Holy Spirit and I spoke to my mom's heart and joined with her heart to heart, this happened. I reached past all the layers of the past, all the history, and my heart reached out and she was open and received it so that the past disappeared in that holy instant. And I was no longer looking at my mom through a filter. And I got to see the face of innocence. And I wept. <laughs> I wept for the time lost that I had spent so long invested in seeing her as she never was. Uh -huh. So married to my definitions and my filter of fear that never let me truly join with her. And then in the contrast, when we did join and I saw her and she saw me and that gap closed, it was like time had never been. I wept for the sense of how could I have never seen this before? And our relationship was transformed and reborn that day. And so it, this has just brought that to my awareness. And I want you to know how worth it it is 
the investment to, to, to drop what you think you know and to allow what's really there to be revealed to you because you will weep. And in that, all my story, all the things in which way I crucified myself as a teenager or a young person went with it, right? It has to. So my past was healed, her past was healed, and their time, you know, the past was wiped away, and there was just Christ to Christ, feeling the love and the appreciation for each other. That's that healing. Was instantaneous, that too. Sis, I remember you telling me that. Yes. And yeah. Your, and your relationship with your mom now is heavenly heaven heaven she changed heaven. oh God. She changed. like what happened the miracle happened right happened i saw her with real eyes i saw her minus you know the filter the filter so there you go mm, that's what you. awaits us when we're willing to drop the filter so i'm just yeah. trying to give you an incentive <laughs> Yeah, and there's nothing more that we want. We want that union. We don't want the separation, the conflict. We want that union. That's what every one of us wants more than anything else yes. in our core, on our inner altar. Yes. It's, oh. it's just, and yeah. that's why we weep. Yeah. That's why. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank yeah, you. that was helpful. Um, <clears throat> where was I up to? The th third one? Uh, oh, sorry, maybe. which one? Oh, I, I, think, I think I interrupted you halfway through three. So maybe if you want to just read. Okay, I might just start again. Sorry yeah. about that. But, no, I so, Number three, my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. I see only my own thoughts and my mind is preoccupied with the past. That's right. What then can I see as it is? And then you came in and explained that for the first time ever, you saw your mom yes. as she really is, yes. not as the ego projected, right? right? Okay. Let me remember that I look on the past to prevent mm -hmm. the present. Mm -hmm. The miracle from dawning on my mind. Let me understand that I am trying to use time against God, the past against God. Mm -hmm. Let me learn to give the past away, realizing that in doing so, so doing, I am giving up nothing, absolutely nothing. In exchange for nothing. everything. Yeah, in exchange for everything. Oh my God! <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, your inheritance is lying there, right here. Not here, but here. <laughs> so every time I'm triggered, mm. if somebody really triggers me, there's a gift. Oh. There's the gift right there. Am I going to stop right there? Just mm. press stop on the stop button in the ego mind. Yes. And ask Holy Spirit to intervene and show me what is really there. Am I going to do that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, no hugging the filter to us any longer. We want to drop it. And the trigger is, hey, you're seeing through a filter right now. You're giving life to what's not there. You're in, uh, you're hallucinating. Would you like to wake up? Would you like the gift of seeing truly? Because I'm right here in your mind as the mind of God to give that to you. And all I'm asking for is your little willingness. Give me your madness and I will give you a miracle. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. I just got the chills in. <laughs> yes. You know, that's a tough one. Is it a tough one? No. Holy relationship is yeah. the, the pearl, the diamond, the, the everything, the all in all. Okay, what? so paragraph four um, <laughs> of lesson 52. I yeah. see nothing as it is now. Mm -hmm. mm, aren't these remarkable, these lessons? I'm so I great. see nothing as it is now. The ego mm -hmm. filter sees nothing as it is now. If I see nothing as it is now, 
it can truly be said that I see nothing. <laughs> right, right. It's redundant, it's obvious, but it needed to be said. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. I can see only what is now. The choice is not whether to see the past or the present. The choice is merely whether to see or not. Yes. I'm either seeing or I'm seeing nothing. Right. You're blind or you see. It's yeah. not it's not the it's not being dragged around on a horizontal timeline and or look, deciding whether you want to see the past or not. It's just do you want to see period meaning capital S do you want to see with Christ vision or not? You're either, you know, seeing with the light on or you're standing in the darkness trying to make some substitutes. Beautiful. What I have chosen to see has cost me vision. Christ vision. Mm -hmm. Now I would choose again that I may see. There's the willingness again. Yep. Just giving Holy Spirit that willingness. Beautiful. The next one is five. My thoughts do not mean anything. I have no private thoughts. Yet it is only private thoughts of which I am aware. What can these thoughts mean? They do not exist and so they mean nothing. Yet my mind is part of creation and part of its creator you know, God, would I not rather join the thinking of the universe than to, to obscure all that is really mine with my pitiful and meaningless private thoughts? Sis, you have the, the gap diagram there. Yes. Can we just look at that for a second? All right. Um, and look at those two minds. If you can open up, see the two private. Oh, sorry. Yes. Minds, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's two minds, and they've agreed to look upon um, all that's in the gap. Yes. yes. They each believe that they have a private mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And they agree to all the seeds of pestilence that God knows nothing about in that's the gap. Right. Yeah. Right. And then they give seeming life to all of this adversity in the gap. Yeah. Right, because it's not going on, but their agreement that it is seems to give rise to what cannot be in truth. If we're all just asleep and hallucinating and all talking in some strange language and we've made up images and we've all agreed on false definitions, well, it would seem to be going on. But of course, it's only by the agreement of two or more minds that this would seem to be occurring but again, the only mind is the mind of God. Only what God is knowing can be known. And when he created us in his image and likeness, our mind is the extension of God's mind. And that's the only mind there is. So private, independent thoughts apart from God aren't really thoughts at all, which is what we, we covered previously. So do you want to really think or not? Right. Letting God order our thoughts. Uh huh. Go ahead. Exits. Yeah. And again, I think we mentioned it before, but it's worth saying again is that if I have a private mind, yeah. right, and you have a private mind, yeah, we're going to clash. Oh yeah. All right, because <laughs> you know my personal agendas are different than your personal agendas, and yes. so, bang, there's going to be a collision at some point. That's right, because right. we're it's a mutual usury. I love you as long as you agree with my temporary thoughts apart from God. You know, as long as we serve one another in this agreement. But boy, if you withdraw your agreement, my love goes, boop, you know, right? That's, it. that's a special relationship. Yeah. Okay. No, that's great. Thank you. So big reason why my thoughts, my private thoughts mean nothing. So good. <laughs> <laughs> All my education, nothing. My degrees, goose egg, nada, nothing at all. 
but look at that. Would I not rather join the thinking of the universe than to obscure all that than to obscure all that is really mine with my pitiful and meaningless private thoughts? Thinking of the universe, that's the mind of God. We limit ourselves. It's such a tra travesty to think that what we are is unlimited uh, as this unlimited light and spirit and son of God into mortals in a meat suit with a brain, you know, and our false education that just limits us down to like nothing. And this is what we think with, but just, I, I just like the idea of stretching it and going, what does that mean to share the mind of the universe, to think concurrently with the universe? Well, we're talking That's about that. boundlessness, if there's yes. such a word. Yeah, limitless, boundless, infinite, eternal. I mean, just start, you know, just start swishing that around a little bit. What well, might it be like? like a good cocktail, right? Yeah. <laughs> All of dirty? No? Okay. All right. That's lesson 52. That was fun. That was fun. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. See you tomorrow for, for lesson 53. Right? Bye, family. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.